One of the most iconic elements of the Crash Bandicoot series is the crates, and the games always encourage you to break as many as possible. That's primarily how you collect extra lives, extra hit points, and even checkpoints. And breaking every crate in the game is usually necessary if you want to complete it to 100%. Whenever people try to beat a Crash game without breaking any boxes, quite early on the challenge shifts to finding the minimum number you can get away with breaking instead. But what if it it was simply touching the crates that you had to avoid. And what if any crate you did touch would, let's say, kill you instantly? Well, that's the challenge that arises if you replace every box in the game with my favourite, the Nitro Crate. So would it be possible to beat the game that they were introduced in, Crash Bandicoot 2, if every crate was a Nitro Crate? No. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can't do it, in the original PS1 game anyway, not with the rules I'm going by. I got stuck in level 2 when I tried it, but as much love as I have for that game, breaking the Ensane trilogy is kind of my whole thing, so that's what I'm actually going to be using for this. I don't want to spoil anything, but you can at least get further than this in the remake. And I'm trying this with Crash 2 rather than the first game for a similar reason. Even if you can find a way past this wall of death in the second level, you pretty much can't even start level 3 because this thing is supposed to be an arrow crate that bounces you up to the level proper. And when I say I want every crate to be a nitro, that means no exceptions. As far as I can tell, it's completely impossible to get any further than this point in Crash 1, so let's focus on Crash 2 for now. My aim was to beat the game by collecting all 25 crystals necessary to reach the final boss. That means starting from a new game with no secret paths unlocked and no sprinting ability. And there are a couple of other rules I wanted to stick to while attempting this, just to make it a bit more interesting. Firstly, no using Aku Aku masks that you are given for free because of dying a lot. Be that intentional death abuse or just from being bad at the game. Now, I am pretty bad, so I did die a lot. I did get a few game overs and occasionally the game did take pity on me and give me some extra protection. But in a lot of places, that allows you to just blitz through loads of nitros in one go. That feels pretty cheap to me. So anytime that happened, I made sure to just sacrifice the extra masks on some hazard I'd already got past legitimately. It should be obvious that what you're about to watch was not a single clean run of the game. Not even close. But yes, the only Aku Aku masks I will be using are ones I can actually find and pick up in the levels. And since most of the masks you normally get come from Aku Aku crates, and those are all nitros now, we won't be seeing many masks in this run. But that brings me on to the final rule, no revisiting levels. Because if you do find a mask floating around somewhere outside of a crate, you could just keep coming back to collect it over and over again in between every level. And similar to the death masks, that is part of how the game works. But I want to see if it's possible to beat the game without doing that. So every mask that I do find, I'm only going to be using one. And if you want to try this challenge for yourself, I'll upload the mod somewhere and put a link in the description. I'd love to see someone who's actually good at this game give it a go and show me all the easy tricks that I missed. But right now, I think it's my turn to try it, so let's go. The opening cutscene leads into a short intro level that doesn't contain a crystal and it can be skipped. But there are a few nitros here if you want to start practicing avoiding them before you get properly started with the game. And the first real level, Turtle Woods, isn't much of a problem either. This level in particular is intended to be beatable without breaking any boxes because that's how you unlock one of the special gems in the game. So that means there's nothing that's impossible to get past and not a lot to talk about. But it is worth mentioning the bonus round. Anytime you go into a bonus round, the game will set the entrance of that bonus as a checkpoint. And since there are no longer any checkpoint crates in the game, that's the only way to avoid having to replay the level from the start every time you die. So it's usually a good idea to jump into these. Most bonus levels I found aren't actually possible to complete, so I won't bother showing any more after this one, but it's a good place to demonstrate the weird behavior of the nitro crates. Because of the way they hop up and down, when they're stacked in certain ways, and especially in tight spaces, they can get stuck in odd positions, and you might see a different arrangement of some groups of crates every time you play a level. With these three specifically, sometimes they'll be floating and you can slide underneath 
underneath them. And sometimes they'll be on the ground and you have to jump over them instead. That unpredictability can sometimes help and sometimes hinder, so you gotta keep your wits about you. The only real awkward part of this level is this nitro wall. The low ceiling means you need a bit more precision than other jumps in the level, but it's not too bad, not compared to what's to come, anyway. So crystal number one is nice and simple. And there is the blue gem, because I didn't break any crates. Don't need it for any percent, but it's a nice souvenir, isn't it? Level two is Snow Go. I definitely found the snow levels to be the most interesting ones to navigate through. Things start to look a bit tricky once you reach the side scrolling section. These crates can easily be jumped over, but well, these two are the ones that ended my attempt at this in the PS1 version. But in the remake, turns out you can actually just walk in front of these. Hey, those, they just jumped right at the moment when I walked past them, didn't they? I wonder if I would have been able to slide under them then. No, the, the chances of that working must be tiny. It would be crazy to even consider that as a, a viable strategy to, to ever use in this game, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be silly. There's supposed to be an iron arrow crate here, but you can manage without it. And instead of getting in front of these boxes, you can sneak behind them instead. That is a very satisfying crystal to collect. This would normally be another iron arrow crate, and this jumps a bit higher than the last one. It took me a few attempts, but you can just about make it. And that's about it for Snow Go. With the river levels, it's mostly about being a bit more precise with your movements when riding the jet board than you'd normally have to be. Although this first one, Hang out. It doesn't require too much of that. Avoiding the mines in this level is still harder than getting around the nitros, and there's no difficult high jumps or anything like that, so this shouldn't be a problem. The pits is another very simple level. The hardest part of this one for me is always remembering which way to go at the fork to get to the crystal. So the nitros don't make a whole lot of difference here, and you can ignore them pretty easily. And after this, there's only one more level in the first walkthrough. Crash Dash is a boulder chase, and the thing you want to be careful with here is the way the game likes to be a bit over dramatic at the end of each boulder section. If you're standing too close to a boulder when it finishes its run, you'll be thrown away from it, even if you're completely stationary, and that can sometimes push you into some nitros. But if you can get to the crystal, then that's the first five done already, and it's time to face the first boss fight. This loading screen has some really useful advice for us, actually, but uh, the nitros that Ripper Roo uses are just flat tiles. And although you can swap them with proper nitro boxes, it kind of breaks how the fight works, so I just left them alone. The boss Bosses don't really factor into this whole nitro challenge, so let's move on. The first thing I'll always do after getting to the second walkthrough is switch to Coco. For a while, I thought there might be one point in the game where it's actually essential to play as Coco because of an oft-forgotten special ability she has in this game, but I never found a good place to use it in the end. Right at the start of Snowbiz, you get another one of those high ledges that you're supposed to use an arrow crate for. The nice thing about this one is you can spin an enemy into the nitro, so there's no danger of falling into it while you try to make that jump. I'm not sure what the best way to get up these is, but I found that jumping diagonally towards the centre of the ledge gives me the best chance of landing it. Once again, there's some crates you can just walk in front of in the 2D section. And there's a weird thing that happens here sometimes when you kick this seal into some nitros that are apparently inside the ceiling in this cave. Turns out there's actually a huge grid of crates directly above this area as part of the secret path of this level. And all of those nitros being packed together means they immediately fall into that chasm as soon as they spawn. You can't get in front of or behind this pair of nitros, but if you carefully jump over them, you can just about stand on the other side. And after that, it's not too complicated to get the crystal and finish the level. Air Crash puts you back on the jet board, and as long as you don't try to rush through it, you can avoid the nitros and get to the crystal. Ah, now this is a fun level. I, I love Bear It. Isn't Polar just the best? Look at him go. This level being an auto-scroller might add to the challenge of avoiding all the nitros, but you're not moving too fast, so it should be okay. Another thing is, there's no bonus in this level, which means no checkpoints, so you want to be careful on that ice. If you listen out for it, you can hear explosions off-screen a couple of times. That's because there's normally TNTs that start counting down automatically when you reach a certain point. Because they're now nitros, they just explode instantly when you enter the trigger zone, and by the time you reach them, they're already gone. But that's it for better. It. I hope we get another polar level soon. Crash Crush is another boulder chase, pretty similar to the first. This looks daunting at first, but a normal single jump will get you over it. Just past the crystal is a boost pad that equals unavoidable death, so maybe don't touch that one. 
level 10, the eel deal, is the first time I'm going to do something that will help me out later in the game. If I take the right hand tunnel here, I end up in a room full of nitros. And even in the normal game, this is a room full of nitros. If you get to the end of the secret area that's hidden behind this wall, you'll find the green gem. I don't think it's 100% necessary to get the green gem, but it will make things a bit easier later on. Most of this level though isn't affected much by the nitros. It's the cramped tunnels where you can't see very far ahead of you where I think you're more likely to get killed. A lot of the crates seem to be just stacked up in places you can easily avoid, and when you get to the monkey bar section, you'd have to go out of your way to hit any crates. And that is already the end of Warp Room 2. You just have to fight the Komodo brothers, and then it's time for plant food. As you might expect from the name, one of the main challenges with this level is trying not to get eaten by the fly traps. Some of the positions of the nitros do make that more difficult, but the bigger problem for me was not having an Aku Aku mask for this. You really have to time your boost well to get past the plants without taking a hit, but it is possible. Sewer or Later has this big wall that's really fun to completely destroy, but what's even more exciting than that is, with this being the 12th crystal, we're already about to pass the halfway mark, and nothing too problematic has happened yet. I think this is going to be much easier than I was expecting. Bear Down is another polar level, so it's sure to be a fun one. It's very easy to dodge these nitros at the start. If you're already holding right before polar starts running, then you'll have no trouble getting past. It might take you a couple of attempts to get through the level, but there's nothing that's impossible to avoid, so getting the crystal is pretty simple and... Oh, no, no, hang on, wait. S sorry. <laughs> sorry. Silly me. I was accidentally talking about the PS1 version of this level. My mistake. What I meant to say was, Bear Down is a piece of shit, and Polar is a dick. You know those four nitros at the start that you can easily get around in the original game? You cannot do the same thing here. In this version of the level, the game prevents you from moving at all until that starting animation has finished playing, which means there is no possible way to move to the side or to jump in time to avoid these four crates. You have no control over Polar and Crash's movement until they're just past that point. And apparently Polar's completely fine, he couldn't care less, but the only thing that could protect Crash from that explosion, an Aku Aku mask, is completely banned from this level. Even if I wasn't sticking to that rule about extra Aku Akus, you couldn't cheat like that anyway. You won't be given any masks for dying a lot in any of the Polar levels. I've seen with my own eyes that these four Nitros can kill you literally thousands of times, and the game will still not give you any masks. Yes, I said thousands. A saner man than me might try this level a few times to confirm that you can't get around these, and then call it there and say, no, you know what, you can't beat the game, this is where it ends, see you later. But come on, we're only halfway through the game, it has got to be something we can do. I mean, you can do it in the original Crash too, so it'd be an awful shame if this really was the end. My first instinct was to try skipping Polar altogether and playing the whole level as Crash. I knew that at one point it had been possible to jump far enough from this ledge to make it past the trigger for Polar, but looking into it, that might have only ever worked if you had the sprinting ability that you don't unlock until you beat the final boss, so that wouldn't really help here. Please let me know if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find any way of doing it, and I didn't want to cheat to give myself the speed choose early, like if I'm going to do that, I might as well just give myself the bazooka while I'm at it. Now if, if I had to mod the game to beat this level then, I wanted the only thing I messed with to be the crates, and you don't need to move the four problem crates very far to make it possible to avoid them. I think that might be justifiable. It seems like Naughty Dog, at least, intended for you to be able to miss these if you really wanted to. And it does seem unfair to me that the game forces you to break them. That never happens anywhere else. There is that little quirk of the boulder levels where it can sometimes make you dive into some crates, but that can be avoided. If you want to download this mod for yourself, I'll also provide this slightly modified crates file with these different positions as a separate link if you want to use it, but does that mean there's still a way to do this that doesn't involve moving these nitros? Well, I don't know about you, but watching them bounce and jiggle around the way they do, I couldn't help but wonder, is there a possibility that they might be able to hop just high enough that you can actually pass underneath them? Is that completely crazy? Well, I did a little experiment. I wanted to find out exactly how high the nitros would need to jump to let you pass below them unharmed. So initially, I just raised them up by a couple of crate heights, kind of expecting that it wouldn't be enough and that I'd have to go higher. But I sailed straight through, no problem. So I gradually lowered them down until I found the lowest point I could take them where you can still slip underneath without anything exploding. Turns out, it's here. 
it appears as though while that starting animation is playing that locks your controls, your hitbox is only about the size of Polar rather than Crash and Polar together as you might expect. And clearly the Nitros are able to jump higher than that. It might not be very likely that they'll all jump up at the exact moment you're about to hit them, but this is enough to show that it's feasible, right? Sure. If you're satisfied that this line I've drawn is enough evidence for you, then I think that's fair. But I wasn't satisfied with this. So I reset the crates to their normal position. I gave myself a thousand lives and I set Crash endlessly walking forwards with an elastic band around the analog stick. I remembered later I, I could have just started him walking and alt tabbed out the game. But I let that run in the background while I got on with my life doing other things. I did notice that it came close a few times, but nothing really notable happened until it had been going for about an hour when my life count was somewhere down in the 600s. On this attempt, the four impossible nitro crates that I have been trying so hard to find a way to get around are just not there. What? What? Conveniently, I was right next to my computer when this first happened, so I was able to grab the controller in time to take advantage of this and confirm that the level was now playable. I didn't quite make it to the crystal, but that was interesting, wasn't it? I guessed that the nitros had somehow glitched into each other or something and exploded off screen. And once I was able to look back at this footage, I could hear it happen as soon as I spawned in on that occasion. As the game continued to run, I saw the same thing happen a few more times. Most of the time I didn't bother trying to beat the level, I was still hoping the nitros would jump over me, and if I could react in time I wanted that to be how I got the crystal. But after three hours and almost all of my lives depleted, I decided to just go for it while I had the chance. The rest of the level is just like on the PS1, it's perfectly beatable, here's me at the end trying to walk while I still have that elastic band on the analog stick. And there is confirmation. Six crates broken is two that normally explode themselves because they're the same as the automatic TNTs in the last polar level, plus those pesky fall from the start. So in the end, out of 974 attempts, those nitros exploded before I got to them 11 times, which is roughly 1%. I don't know why it happens, but after a bit more experimenting, I believe it may only happen when the game's set to 60 FPS. But a 1% chance, with specific settings enabled, is higher than 0%, so it is possible to beat this level without having to move any crates. Then again, the question wasn't, can you beat Crash 2 if every crate is a nitro, and if some of them just disappear sometimes? So I did keep testing it for a bit longer. This sudden drop in quality is because I switched to my knackered old MacBook to do this. I really couldn't afford to put my main computer out of action for even longer just for this stupid endeavor. I left this running in the corner and this time I just froze the life count so it would keep going forever or at least until the recording filled up the drive. And after four hours, which was approximately 1,200 deaths and zero instances of the nitros exploding on their own, by the way, that's partly where my theory about needing 60 FPS comes from. But after four hours, this happened. Oh my god. I will explain why I'm now running on the spot, but let's have an action replay first. That right there made my day. The reason why I'm stuck here though is because I didn't want to have to keep an eye on this all day. I had stuff to do and places to be, so if this did happen at any point, I wanted it to be obvious that it had when I came back to check on it. So I added some invisible walls here to stop me from going any further and stop me from drowning. I didn't catch this happening live, so when I did notice it, you can see me checking that none of the crates have exploded, and for some reason the performance went to shit when I did, so I think it's pretty lucky that the money shot itself is somewhat watchable. Unfortunately, because of those invisible walls, it is impossible to complete the level from here. But we already know the rest of the level is fine, so I think that's okay. I'd estimate that I had at least 4,000 attempts at this on a couple of different computers and on the Switch version, and I only had all four nitros jump at the right time to let me pass once. So you are quite a bit more likely to have them just explode when you spawn in. But there you have it you absolutely can beat Bear down when all the crates are nitros. Ah, fucking Polar. Level 14, finally, is Road to Ruin. 
and after all the time I spent looking for a way to beat the previous level without moving any crates, this level just decides, fuck it, I'll move some for you. I didn't actually want to go into this death route, but stepping on the platform does make it easier to jump around these crates if you come back. Another weird thing that can happen here is, well, this. It looks like you're temporarily invulnerable while that platform is moving, even after you've fallen off it. Maybe there's some way to take advantage of that somewhere in the game, but you don't really need to here. It's a simple enough job to get the crystal and get out. Next is unbearable. And would you look at that? It's, it's another polar bear that can survive running through nitros. At least this one doesn't pretend to be your friend before he attempts to murder you. He's, he's pretty upfront about it. Unlike this little wanker who's back already. But to be fair, he doesn't do that this time around. He, he is quite helpful here. This level's fine, and it does feel quite appropriate that we round off Warp Room 3 with a polar section, and it's the last we'll be seeing of him since the secret levels aren't necessary to beat the game. I'm not too devastated about that. See you later, polar, you prick. There's a brief visit to Tiny Tiger here. Um, mate, yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel. And then here we are in the fourth Warp Room. I'm going to be doing things slightly differently this time. Up until now, I've just been playing every level in order, but you can do the levels in each set of five in whatever order you want. It took me quite a while to figure out how I wanted to handle this part of the game, but I'm going to skip ahead to level 17, digging it. I could have done this at the end of the walkroom instead, because this level is the odd one out. There's some strategy behind doing the other four in a particular order. With this one, I'm just getting it out of the way because I don't really like it. This is another one where the hazards that were already here are more annoying than the nitros, as well as the fact that you can't get any Aku Akus. But I do like the fact that you can leave this level early. Not not too far past the crystal is this secret exit. Back up at Warp Room 4, the next level I'm heading into is Behaving. This level is very similar to Digging It, there's just a lot more of everything that I don't like about Digging It. But it is fun to clear out several nitros and the swarm of bees in one fell swoop or fell spin. The main event with this one though is these special nitros. You can tell that none of these things are real crates because these iron ones underneath the nitros have remained as they were because they're just part of the scenery. It's all a lie. And climbing up these stairs will bring you here. I want to be in this secret area for one reason and one reason only and it's not the purple gem. I'm not sure if I'd ever got to the end of this path before I did it here. Normally you just come here for the gem and then you can kill yourself and go back to the main level. This is an optional area and it's full of nitros and I'm being shot at quite a lot but if you can make it to the end you're rewarded with something very precious. The first Aku Aku mask of the whole run. What a sight for sore eyes. As per the rules of the challenge that I came up with, I won't be coming back to this level later to grab the same mask again, so I'm planning to use it in one specific place. If you can suspend your disbelief and accept that it is possible that I kept that mask until the end of the level, then we'll move on to the next one, which is gonna be hanging out. There's a nitro on this monkey bar section that's easier to get past than it looks, thankfully, because just after that, you get to this nightmare. And this is the obstacle that I wanted the mask for, and the entire reason why I took that secret path with the purple gem. Beyond this point, everything's pretty simple, and getting the crystal is easy enough, but I think it's worth showing you this. Sometimes, these nitros all being squeezed into this small tunnel makes them rearrange themselves to leave a gap that's just the perfect size for crawling through. And this definitely happens more often than those crates in Bear Down exploding of their own accord. So if you don't have a mask here, you might be okay, but it's still safer to bring one. I'm doing Ruination next because it too has some masks and I'm gonna need them for the next level. If you know the game, you know what's coming. In fact, I think this is the only level other than behaving where it's possible to pick up any masks in this run. The other loose masks that I'm aware of are actually impossible to reach with the game in this state. And there is one mask in this level you can't get. This would normally be an arrow crate that would launch you up to one that's just above me here. But just up ahead is a green gem platform, which I can get onto because I have the green gem. You can just jump over to this area without having collected the green gem, but getting back to the main level after you've completed this path is much easier if you've got the gem. The alternative is backtracking and that's never fun. So it's definitely worth that short diversion all the way back in level 10. 
it makes things a little bit easier here. There is a gem that you can pick up along the way, which is normally the main reason why you'd want to be here, but I'm here for the mask. That's much more useful to me. And once you're back to the main level, the crystal is right there. And get this, another mask. This is a very generous level. And now I can take two hits without dying. That is going to be pretty useful because the next level and the final one of Warp Room 4 is Cold Hard Crash. This level is quite notorious, definitely one of the hardest when you're going for 100% anyway. And the whole nitro situation makes just reaching the end more complicated than normal. With hanging out, you could see that sometimes it's possible to beat the level without the mask that I brought with me. But with this level, I think having two masks is necessary. There's some crates up here that you can sometimes get behind, but it seems a bit hit or miss. So it's always safer to destroy them using the seal. At this part, normally the crate on the right here is a T. TNT. And when you get about this close to it, one of those icicles falls down and hits it, which triggers the countdown and gives you a few seconds to get away before it explodes. Now that this is a nitro, you don't get that chance to escape. When it does explode, the other nitro will be caught in the blast and will also explode. So you really don't have time to jump back over to where you came from. And if you continue to the right, you'll get hit by these other icicles when they fall. So the only way to survive this without losing a mask is to jump straight up the instant you land in between the two crates. There's a few places like that where you have to be quick in this level and the next one is the very next thing you come to. Remember those crates really early on where you could get in front of them in this game but not in the original Crash 2? This is the opposite of that. In the PS1 version you can jump around this stack of boxes but for some reason in the insane version they added an invisible wall here and I'm pretty sure you can't make it over the top of this either so I am going to be losing a mask here. It might look like it should be as simple as just walking straight through it like the same as that nitro wall in the sewers. Well, it, it's good to know what's coming up just ahead before you rush into anything. Here I am with my two masks and these crates are going to take one of them away from me. I've accepted that. But to be able to finish the level, it's absolutely essential that you still have a mask by the time you make it over here where the penguin is. I think it might just about be possible to clear this gap when there aren't nitros in the way. Normally these would be outline crates with no physical presence until you activate a switch. But remember what I said at the start? No exceptions. Outline crates and switch crates, they're all nitros now, so you can't avoid touching some of these. What all that means is that after taking the hit here, you have to jump onto these steps and then immediately jump from there to the ledge as the steps explode beneath you. And you need to do that before the invincibility frames you get from losing the mask run out. If you're just a fraction of a second too slow, you'll lose the second mask as well. This is so tight that it, it took me a while to figure out that it was even possible, but you don't actually need to slide through that wall, by the way. You can make it by just running through it. And I don't know if all that spinning is necessary, but I like how dramatic it looks. Once you've made it over here, you can either continue on the normal path or head into the death route. If you take the normal path, there's this huge tower of nitros that you can actually completely avoid by just doing a body slam right before you get to them. And you can use this one penguin to clear out quite a lot of the crates that are coming up. But a bit further ahead, you'll come to this. Remember how Crash 1 would be impossible to complete because of the arrow crates in the third level being gone? This is the same problem. This should be an arrow crate and you can't make this jump without it. So that means, yeah, you have to take the dreaded death route instead. It starts off okay, but then there's this box that you can sometimes fit behind and sometimes can't. I think if you take it slow, you shouldn't set it off, but it is quite temperamental. If you manage to get past this and you still have a mask at this point, this is where you're going to lose it. Unless these nitros can glitch themselves into some weird layout or just explode on their own. But I haven't seen that happen before, so my tactic is... It's not very often that I've attempted this section of the death route without being fully invincible, so it did take me a few attempts to get the hang of doing it without any masks. You just have to time your jumps well and you can make it to the end. And you even get a gem for your troubles. Now all that's left to do is get the crystal and finish the level. These jumps are a bit scary because you have to pass very close to the nitros while spinning to be able to make it up there. But once you do, the end of the level is right there. That is Cold Hard Crash, defeated, and the fourth warp room done. Well, 
you do have to fight engine first but he doesn't throw any crates at you in this boss fight so there's nothing to turn into nitros and nothing to say about it but man that whole warp room is a hell of a gauntlet i love all the forward thinking you need to do to be able to get through it all i mean the way i did it you start setting up for cold hard crash way back in the second warp room but when it comes to the fifth warp room we don't get any of that you can do the final five levels in any order you like you never need a mask at any point you never need to get onto any gem paths or, or death roots. I always thought of this level pissing it away as one of the harder ones but adding more nitros to it doesn't make a noticeable difference. There's this one box that can really screw you if this enemy misses it but every other nitro can easily be walked around or jumped over. It's a similar story with Rocket. The nitros aren't any harder to avoid than all the other dangerous stuff that's already here. I'm used to taking my time with the jetpack because I struggle to control it and well obviously there's no difficult jumping or anything like that in this one. Really this just made me think about how much easier some of the previous levels would have been if I'd been able to use the jetpack. The big gimmick with night fights is that it's pitch dark and you need the help of these fireflies to see where you're going. With the equivalent level in Crash 1 we might have been in trouble because you need to break boxes to get your light source but that's not an issue here. There are very few crates in the main path so like with the last couple of levels it's the existing enemies and stuff you have to worry about more than the nitros. Pack attack is really just rocket again. It's not even any longer there's just more obstacles. That does include a couple of places where you have to be a bit careful to get past a big group of nitros but being able to literally fly means it's nothing compared to some of the platforming levels and just like that it's the final level of the game spaced out i had something interesting happen right at the start i managed to briefly land on this nitro without it exploding that is something that happens occasionally i don't know what causes it and i don't know if there's any point in the game where you can abuse it but i did go back with this one to check that i could actually clear that jump properly this area that's full of nitros is exactly the same as it normally is all of these crates are intended to be nitros so even though it's pretty easy to die here the level was made that way so you don't need to do anything crazy to get through it. And I think that is really why the final warp room ends up being one of the easiest parts of the whole run. You're expected to be doing some more precise jumping and attacking towards the end of the game. So these final levels were designed with that in mind. The reason why the hardest parts of this playthrough were earlier on is because you have to do that kind of platforming in areas that weren't meant for it. In this level, once you're past the bonus stage, there's a grand total of three single nitros that you have to jump over and the rest can be ignored. All you have to worry about in the final part of the final level is the enemies, the crushing pillars and the shrink rays that would have been here anyway. Reach the exit and that's it. 25 out of 25 crystals collected. We can confirm that once we're back in the warp room. 25 crystals. There they are. So as long as you're playing the insane version, the answer to the question of whether or not you can beat Crash 2 when every crate is a nitro is yes. As for whether or not you should try to do it, probably not. Or at least, if you are going to try it, I would highly recommend using the modified bear down crate positions. Apart from that quite annoying level, the rest of the game is actually pretty fun like this. I enjoyed the challenge of trying to find a way through the fourth warp room anyway, and I found it really interesting that the number of masks that it was possible for me to collect was the exact number that I needed. Although if you get lucky with that nitro wall and hanging out, it's definitely possible to beat the game with only two masks, and maybe less. If I played every level as many times as I played bear down, I'm sure I would have seen some more nitros disappearing on their own at some point. I did see a few other weird things happen like one occasion when a nitro killed me while I was trying to jump over it and the game just gave up, never respawned me and declared I was suddenly at 105% completion. You're not even supposed to be able to get past 102 in this game as far as I know so if you try this out for yourself you may well have a different experience to me and I'd love to know if you do, I'd love to know if you find any tricks that I missed and I'd especially love to know if you can manage a full run of bear down that starts with sneaking under the nitros. I don't even care if there is a way to get past Polar that I, I don't know about. That is what I want to see. But I think I'm going to stay away from that level for a while now. So maybe I should try doing this with Crash 3 next. I have no idea how far you can get with that game. I haven't really looked into it. I feel like the superpowers could add an interesting dynamic to it though. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, aren't I? I haven't actually technically beaten this game yet since I haven't fought the final boss. So... I'll just take care of that quickly. 
Oh, uh, what? Where's Cortex? He should be right here, shouldn't he? Oh, I, I told you some weird stuff happens with this game sometimes. Let's, let's see what's going on. Hey, uh, there's something... What? 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 What is that? I don't know if... Oh, is, it, is it a good idea to... Uh, should I be going near this thing? I, I wonder what it does. Uh... Oops.